know if you're aware of this, but working in the entertainment field can be, well... Rough. Wonderful, but really hard. Ridiculous. I mean, I love it, but everything about it is appealing. Let's call it challenging. It's sometimes a long time between jobs. A long time. And if there's no work, there's no money. And no insurance. Not good. And then you get a job and everything changes. There's nothing better. Until your show closes. Or your TV show gets canceled. Or the dance company folds. Or you get injured. It's a lot. It's a great business, except when it's not. The good news is the Actors Fund. Oh my god, I love the Actors Fund. Now, the first thing you have to know is that it's not just for actors. Say it with me. It's not just for actors. It's not just for actors. If you work in film, television, or any of the performing arts, the Actors Fund is here for everyone in entertainment. Everyone. All of this is the Actors Fund. They understand how bananas this business is. Their programs are designed with entertainment professionals in mind. They get it. They are our safe place. Our safety net. And they are completely essential to our community. And not just for actors. The Actors Fund. For everyone. 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 Everyone in entertainment. Hello, my name is James Renault Iglehart, and welcome to the New Works Virtual Festival, a benefit for the Actors Fund. The Actors Fund is a 501 charitable organization that supports everyone involved in the entertainment industry. So, please make a donation if you can by texting 5678-GIVE to 56512 or go to theactorsfund.org slash NWVFest. We appreciate your support, and now... Sit back and relax and enjoy the rest of the show. The play you're about to see is called A Mighty Road to Heaven. It is a story of how the backstage drama of an 1859 production of Hamlet irreversibly changes American history and not for the better. It deals with themes of patriotism, toxic masculinity, entitlement, anxiety, and most of all, rage. My name is Andre Zucker. I am the writer of A Mighty Road to Heaven, which I sincerely hope you enjoy. I just want to tell you to please contribute to the Actors Fund. Dig deep, deep into your pockets and contribute to the Actors Fund. And thank you to everybody who has made this experience possible. A Mighty Road to Heaven. A play in five acts by Andre Zucker, based on true events. Act one, tempt toward the tornado. What if it tempt you toward the tornado? What if it tempt you toward the tornado? What? What, you don't know your line? It's floor or dreadful summit. What if it tempt you toward the tornado, my lord, or to the dreadful summit uh, floor or dreadful summit uh, uh, line? Wait, 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 wait. What, what if it tempt you toward the tornado, my lord, or to the dreadful summit of the cliff that beetles or his base into the sea? Uh, wait, uh, line. Oh, oh no. Uh, Just get through the scene. Uh, what if it tempts you toward the tornado line? No, you just had my lord, or the dreadful summit of a cliff. What? What if it tempt you toward the tornado, my lord, or to the dreadful summit of the cliff that beetles or his base into the sea line? Unbelievable. Do not interrupt the actors. Get your actors in line. Tighten up all the ranks. In Germany, a stage manager would never speak to his director this way. Well, welcome to Virginia. All right, train is line. Right. And there assume some other horrible form which might deprive your sovereignty of reason and draw you into madness. Say that again. Jesus, John. John, this is unacceptable. In all my years, I've never seen an actor so unprepared. Really? Not even in Germany? You are insufferable. All of this is unnecessary. I was brought across the ocean to put on this production for these actors, and your disregard for the craft is un. Acceptable. I'm sorry. I, I, I just get through the scene. This rehearsal is a farce. And the lesson from you 
the better. These actors, your actors, have blown half of the dialogue. Referring to me, old Phil? No, three, three days, days, days away from opening, from opening night, and he is calling for his lines. All right, fetch his understudy. What? Yeah, maybe you should have brought the actors over the ocean as well. No, no, no I, I know my lines. I have them. I have them all cold. I swear, ice cold. Well, that's not what I'm seeing now. Okay, well, why, why don't we cool everything off? All this animosity, it, it's no good for the show. Well, he needs to know his lines. John is feeling a little bit nervous. It's normal. Us actors sometimes have these rehearsals. All we need is time and patience. John, meet the goddamn understudy. Understudy. You're not replacing John. Well, if he cannot rememorize his lines, he's the breach of his contract, and we can. I have them. Then show me that. John is Horatio, and he's doing this show. His understudy knows all of his lines, all of them. Like a parrot. Uh, can I get a word in if I just- No. I haven't had a single rehearsal with Leon. whatever his name is. Leon. Yeah. Doesn't matter what your name is. This is a right precious situation that cannot work itself out. If you think you're replacing my Horatio now, you're Horatio. you might as well replace me too. I don't need an understudy, all right? The lines are fine. No one is taking the parts that I have been working on, the part I have earned. You rode into it. If I can say. No, don't speak until you're spoken to. It's just nerves. He's an actor. He has nerves. We don't have time for him. We, we need a respite. We don't have any time. Old Phil, come on. We can't. Hi! 10 minutes. Anything to undermine me? If it's nerves, take 10. Relax, meditate, drink. I don't care, just learn your goddamn lines. If you don't have him by the time we're back, the understudy, whatever his name is, he has the part. It, it, it's Leon. My, my, my Christian name is Leon. Ah, oh, shut up. 10 minutes. That's a hard 10 minute break. You're was... not going to embarrass the stage as much as you've embarrassed yourself. Do your job, John. Like a man. It's fine. It's just nerves, sir. I'm going to my office upstairs. Now, nobody bothers me unless the theater is on fire. I find that jerk from across the ocean insufferable, but we cannot take a risk. An old theater haunt like me, I've lost count of how many plays I've been a part of. I cannot count how many times I've done Hamlet. Then you've seen an actor get nervous and blow a line. Not this close to the premiere. We cannot take these chances. Pick up the goddamn script and you run the goddamn lines or I'll share with you a prophecy that culminates in perdition. Okay, I'll run the lines with him. Take a break. He'll have them cold. Cold? Cold as a New Hampshire whorehouse. You need to understand something. Iced. You are not a great actor. There are some newspaper and periodical reviews that would beg to differ. No, you are not. John is not. What's his face is not. Leon. They will remember you when you blow your lines, not the beauty that you brought to the stage. I have the lines memorized. Make no mistake, I know you. I know both of you. I've read every review that you've been in. I know your work. One paper of note even called John the most handsome man in America. Not this again. Yeah, his pretty face of youth will wither into old age. Ever since that review was written, I've had to deal with being handsome. Sounds like a doggone burden. Horatio does not have to be handsome. And I'm not. I'm an actor, a worker. I know my lines. I blew a few, but let us start again, and I'll bring a tornado onto this stage with me. Handsome actors, you're all flash and no fire. Let us not have a repeat of your first performance at the Charles Street Theater. The Baltimoreans mercenarily jeered and heckled you because, because you could not remember your lines. You had to bring that up. After a barn burner of a rehearsal like this, we can only take refuge in drinking. Understudy, want to swig? Yeah, sure. 
it was one time. No understudy then. I'm gonna memorize some lines and get fitted for a costume. Is he trying to embarrass me? Yes, that's exactly what he wants. He wants your place, your part. Can you blame him? He's bonded to climb a ladder. Why can't he just let me have it? It's the business. Nobody has mercy. Why? In Richmond, politicians, military, society types, all will attend this company's performance of Hamlet. People who pay, people who pay for productions, all there. And he'll throw you on the tracks just for a taste of the stage. I don't know if I can. What ho! This is a closed rehearsal. I don't know what that means. It means. I don't care. It's a closed Why rehearsal. Why are you still speaking? Who else is in this theater? Who's asking? A fellow Virginia. We're from Maryland, so I'm not sure that counts. Well, I'm sorry for your handicap. I come with news from the governor. I am in awe of this man. Are you putting on up a comedy or something that might involve throwing pies? Hamlet. Hamlet? Shakespeare. British playwright. The rest is kind of a mystery. I'm not much for Shakespeare. May I give my decree? This is not the only place in Richmond I need to visit today. It's a free country. I mean, there are some glaring exceptions. Don't get political. That was 10. That was a fast 10. Has the lines memorized, or is what's his name uh, to, to, to shine back? Where's the understudy? I require all inhabitants of this theater come forth to hear an emergency decree from Governor Wise. Who is this, Betty? He is from the governor's office. Again, about George William Smith. We're sorry, we have a safe institution with many new and functional fire exits. It's been over 45 years already. No, it's not that. Who's George William Smith? The yeah, former governor of Virginia who killed us in the theater. The executive mansion has never forgiven us. What was the show? Just some respect. What is wrong with you? Who is this poppycock? Don't worry, he's got a good understudy. Leon? You remembered my name. Silence! Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. It's just us. Yeah, but you know, you got, you got to put on a sh good show. Of all people, I would hope that this lot would understand that. <laughs> hear ye. Hear ye, hear ye. The state of Virginia is under attack by the abolitionist and terrorist John Brown. Who's John Brown? He and a small force have overrun the stronghold of Harper's Ferry. Under order of Governor Wise, all public assemblies are banned and closed until the peace is restored to the state of Virginia. The hell it is. Wait, wait, what? Need I repeat myself? Yeah, you need to. All, repeat, all public assemblies are banned until further notice. We're on hold? In as many words. The theater too. I'm going across the street to make the barkeep take every spirit from the bottom shelf and put it into one glass. The cavalry is en route. One man, John Brown, has attacked the state. You should be thanking John Brown because he just saved you and this production. <laughs> clearly, clearly has some time before he needs to memorize Horatio's lines. I know my lines. If you do not have all of your lines memorized, and I mean perfect, if it's not all Tiffany's, I will have you tarred and feathered for opening night. Not sure that's legal. Of course it is. We're below the Mason-Dixon line. Technically, it's legal, but it's frowned on in Richmond. Well. In some parts of more rural counties. Uh, are we still getting per diem for the time the terrorists have seized the state? Who's John Brown? How can one man attack the whole state? I bid you gentlemen, good day. How does it feel to be a charlatan? Want to say that to my face? 
You're a charlatan. You're up because you're- Back off. Oh, come on. What are you gonna do about it? How, how old are you? I've taken 22 revolutions around the sun for the sole purpose of whipping this interloper. Local? You're gonna, you're gonna throw a punch, Charlton? Come on. I'll give you the first punch. Let's see how pretty you are after. Easy. You're not a man. Luck is the only force of will you'll ever have. Listen, go down to the end of the station, have a drink, a good one, an expensive one, and have it on my tab. Give it time, you'll, you'll eventually catch a break. We all do. Enjoy your luck. It's all you got. Have a drink. Fraud. <sighs> Here's business. Hold on a second. They're gonna replace me. Hey, listen, no pressure. We're gonna do this together until you're ready. Those overdramatic ghosts tethered to the stage, take it a little too seriously. They'll be wowed with your talent and they'll forget about some botched rehearsal. Give me the line. It waves me forth again. I'll follow it. John? What if it tempt you toward the tornado, my lord, or to the dreadful summit of the cliff that beetles or his base into the sea, and there assume some other horrible form which might de deprive your sovereignty of reason and draw you into madness? Think of it. The very place puts toys of desperation without more motive into every brain that looks so many fathoms to the sea and hears it roar beneath. You got it, yeah. That's entertainment. Stick with it, you'll be fine. We have a few extra days. So scared. We are, always. We're all scared. When will it stop? I, I, want, it, I want to turn it off. Scene two, an immodest gumption prevails. October 20th, 1859, the bar at the train station in Richmond three days later. Are they here? The boys are on the next train. And what brings you in ahead? I was never even at the front. I ran logistics of them moving the men from here to Harper's Ferry. Harper's Ferry? The boys are back. From the front in Harper's Ferry. Is that the act that John would? What ho, friend? I've met you frequently at functions for the grades. You've given a rapturous monologue at our last fundraiser. This man has been a friend to the militia since he arrived in Virginia. Well, con considering joining the ranks, huh? fighting for the state? An actor? Oh, no. An actor cannot keep a schedule like a soldier. He is a man of the stage. Besides, I'm, I'm from Maryland, so... Any man who wears the uniform of the Virginia Grays is a Virginian, walking in the footsteps of Washington and Jefferson. But nonetheless, a gentleman like yourself is better suited for the stage. Do you bring news from the front? Our boys are victorious. And what of John Brown? No word yet. That man, the, the abolitionist, he's crazy. What, what he did in Kansas, he's, he's a mass murderer. I got a rifle for him should the government need to save time and effort. I'd pack it with silver bullets soaked in holy water. And deny us of our victory, I beg to differ. I can get holy water, but silver, I don't know. I, I don't know. He, I he already marched on Kansas. He went down to Kansas three years ago, retaliated against the sacking of Lawrence went toe to toe with those border ruffians, opened up Brown's, opened up Brown station. This zealot needs to know he isn't in Kansas anymore. All of this, everything I'm saying is coming from the horse's mouth. He loves to speak in public, loves journalists, anyone who will listen. Anyone who will listen, write it down and print it. What a gumption. Just self-aggrandizing and legend making. You'd think a man as crazy as Brown wouldn't be coherent, but he loves a well-structured sentence. Crazy as a Chickatig pony. All of this with one motivation. News from the front. 
No, no, he's just an actor. Just an actor? What can I get you? I desire a drink, something imported from an exotic faraway land where men fear to tread. Sounds like an actor. English brandy? Nothing French? Uh, some have spoken of victory over the dark evangelist John Brown. Is he an abolitionist? I mean, by default, he's not a newspaper publisher. He's not from the coast. He's some righteous Calvinist, righteous Calvinist from Ohio. Oh, never cross a Calvinist. Something I've learned in my business. Just a merchant, but look at it. What about the lines? What? You know, the, the play we're in? Uh, of course, I have them. Look, look it, it's hard to tell. I don't know what happened at that last rehearsal. <sighs> Can you do a run through? Yes. Thank God. This is the first production I've ever heard of whose opening was halted by the actions of a single supervillain. Well, he's been here all morning pouring over old periodicals about John Brown. He's not from a slave state. He's not a rich man. He's just a warlord traveling the land looking for the coming war. He killed a whole gaggle of border ruffians in Kansas and then went on tour through the North like a celebrity. Not even arrested. He spoke at universities. What did he talk about? Holy war. Why? Slavery. He wants to abolish slavery. He wants the South. To I don't understand politics. Well, no more. We're all just waiting on confirmation of the victory at Harper's Fair. <clears throat> Why aren't you with the rest of the uniformed men? I do logistics. I make sure the men get to and fro, make sure horses and the cavalry are ready, trains are on time. Uniforms have buttons, all the small details that allow our brave men to do their bravest. Sounds brave. Something evil approaches. Rye whiskey it is. Hey, can you afford this? On credit? Oh, you need to pay. Please? No, not tonight. Well, we still don't know if Brown is alive or dead. For, for all we know, he escaped with his life. Now, our boys wouldn't let that happen. He's on that train coming, either in chains or in a box. Gentlemen. Yes. I see you waiting for a coming train. Indeed. A barter. I will tell you a vivid account of my nightmare in exchange for some spirit. No. I assure you that my dream will be a satisfying entertainment as well as prophetic in nature, I can feel it. I don't think so. I'll tell it. Should you find it interesting, would you then indulge me in a little drink? It's your breath. I have dreamt of a great tornado. A great tornado moving from north to south. A tornado with 33 layers. As it approached closer, it had 34 layers. In front stood a man with a beard like the Baptist. The tornado kept approaching. What was this tornado? Its approach was unrelenting. An open book on its right side with the Alpha and Omega written across its pages, violently flapping in the wind. The man with the wild beard looked directly into me and he repeated Ezekiel 1-4. As I looked, behold, a stormy wind came out of the north and a great cloud with a brightness around it and fire flashing forth continually and in the midst of fire as if it were gleaming metal. And I looked back at that tornado and I saw fire leading it towards me, burning the prairies and fields as it moved forward. To the left of the tornado, a loaded rifle. Blue sky on one side of the tornado, gray clouds on the other. And the man with the beard stood still with his arms extended like Christ Jesus screaming Ezekiel 13, 13. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, I will make a stormy wind break out of my wrath and there shall be a deluge rain in my anger and great hailstones in wrath 
to make a full end. Have you memorized the book of Ezekiel? I will continue in exchange for a spirit. Okay. Really? What else are we going to do with the per diem? I'm enjoying this. All right. Barkeep, rye all around. Sure. I will not disappoint. My brother craves some action. There is plenty of action. We're waiting with bated breath. Emphasis on bated. The tornado got closer, pulling the blue sky and gray clouds into it. The man with the beard screamed as loud as he could, dead bodies at his feet, wild winds all around us. Who was he? How can you recite these quotes if you haven't memorized the book of Ezekiel? The tornado and fire came closer and the man kept screaming in one note. Be flat. Well, this is worth a second drink. All around. I tell ye, this not for drink, but for out of fear and loathing of what is to come. Bodies was burning in the fire, being ripped apart in the tornado. But I realized something as the man kept screaming. I was unfazed by the great forces of nature, but cowered before the screaming man. I knew I was looking at someone from ancient times, a man of great violence and vision. Great violence and vision. I feared him. And I knew I was more likely to escape the forces of nature, but the great man had already infiltrated my psyche. All of us, the bodies in the fire and the tornado, all under the influence of his violent words. I knew he was beyond my imagination. He put the words of Ezekiel in my mind. He was the judgment of nations incarnate. Then I woke up. With the book of Ezekiel cited to memory? Not by choice. Do you even know your letters? No. Ha! Oh. They're here. He's some sort of drunken reverend, a, a, a boozy preacher. Yeah, we're just lousy with that sort in Richmond, but he ain't that. Lord rejected me long ago. Left me to worship the providence of a brown bottle. I used to be a uniformed man. I lost that a few decades ago. Maybe he's telling me of something bigger than him. What ho! Victor's return from the front. What ho! An immodest gumption prevails. We enter our state capital with John Brown in chains. His men defeated, his uprising quashed. Half off all domestic spirits for the next 15 minutes. God bless America. God bless the great state of Virginia. <laughs> Dick Pepper Tyrannus. Dick Pepper Tyrannus. Uh, and no bourbon. Too expensive. I'm a, I am a friend to the Virginia Grays. I'd like to congratulate you on your victory. I know you. Don't you recognize a fine actor when you see one? He's been at, to several of our gatherings and dances. He, he's performed for our fundraisers. Not to mention, he is in the current production of Hamlet at the Richmond Theater. We'd be happy to extend to you a complimentary seat at our upcoming production of Hamlet. Why is an actor so supportive of our militia? Well, when I came here, the militia was welcoming. I wanted to return the support. You're a brother to us. Unlike the theater. Bucky! Post, is the battalion not disembarking from the train? No, I volunteered to drop off the post and sneak across the mug of there. On me. Thank you, friend. Where to next? It, the entire battalion is bringing the terrorist John Brown's trial. I guess he'd die in a battle. But... You're already in the capital. Why not have the trial now? Uh, not here. Too populated. Eh, trial's not necessary. Skip to the public execution. 
John Brown is a demagogue. A zealot army may be following him right now. The Capitol is, is too crowded to secure. We're taking him to Charlestown, putting our backs to the Appalachian Mountains and holding a trial for Brown. We can secure Charlestown. It's on the other side of this state. This is an extreme situation. Looks like our play will proceed. We can open. Oh, uh, not so fast. Public gatherings, probably not. This is not over until John Brown is fully brought to justice. Mm -hmm. Mind justice, execute. Only one gets justice in the next world. In this one, we all have to settle for the law. So it's still on hold. Brown is trying to raise the slaves to revolt and war. We need mm -hmm. some hands, we need more men. We need to be prepared for a much larger assault than Harper's Ferry. A la Nat Turner. Mm -hmm. And like Nat Turner, Brown will not make it out of Virginia. Here, here. Well, it was a pleasure meeting you gentlemen. Oh, I'm a Chevelle. What? It's a Virginia nuance that one cannot attempt to explain. <laughs> uh, you need more hands? Desperately. We need another brother of ours to ride the mighty road. Governor Wise is on the train. The Virginia Grays and the U.S. Marines are coming from Harper's Ferry by way of the nation's capital. But should the slave army rise, we'll all be overrun. Might I ask if there is a spare uniform in that duffel? John? Brother? Should a Tay allow a spare uniform to fit me, I will join your ranks. John? Looks like you're fixing to write yourself a saggy dog story. Do we have a deal? John. Put more spirit on the bar. Ah, much obliged. What, what are you doing? We have a show to do. History only happens once. But we're both starring. It's nice and, and roomy in the crotch. Tis a sign of fate pulling you towards a moment of historical significance. Let the train take you to the base of the Blue Ridge Mountains, to Charlestown, and the last judgment of the terrorist John Brown. We have a show to do. We're on hold. We're stuck. I can't stand another minute in that pit of vipers, that, that theater. Everyone trying to undermine me, fighting and animosity nonstop. I'm going to serve the state, have some brothers. But I'm your brother. <sighs> The mighty road awaits. Oh, that train. Little brother. We have a commitment, John. If you do this, if you... I'm not going to protect you. I'll let them do what they want. They'll replace you with someone who is far less than you. If you're the man you claim to be, a real man, a Virginian, the time is now. I'll be there for a curtain, in costume, lines memorized. I won't fail. Think of your career. Governor Wise is waving all the remaining men onto the train. You in or out, actor? Promise you, I will return like a man and be on that stage for opening night. Lines perfect in my head, standing next to you, waiting for a curtain to rise. What am I going to tell them? Uh, tell them, tell them, tell them history, Brown. I don't want to be a coward. That tornado is coming this way and I can't resist it. Tell them, tell them I'm gone. Real gone.
I'd prefer a dirty limerick. A group of three Marines in dirty uniforms, two greys from the previous act, and John are sitting around in an empty train car, sprawled out exhausted from the day. You ain't familiar. More beer. We're out of beer? You militia boys couldn't spring for more beer for the journey? We never expected the Marines to take this ride empty-handed. Didn't think you'd suck up our beer so fast. That beer was supposed to take us all the way to Charlestown. I guess Marines never plan past the next five minutes. Hmm. Well, now I'm just not sharing. That is a totally Trojan move. Come on, another. All right, all right, one second. We'll do one. You guys gonna do, do with it, this with us? Sure. Him too? I already said we're doing this. All right then. I met her in Fairfax County. She was neat. Her torso and legs were pretty and petite. We went for a meal. I saw her for real. The knot I pushed it deep in her seat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good poem. Uh, the limerick. <laughs> Who is he? A traveler. Interested party. He wants to see the righteousness of our cause. Righteousness. Only one of the greys would say that. <laughs> How about another poem? I have a whole one. Yeah, all right. Yeah, another. There once was a man named Brown <laughs> who, was caught, who caused trouble over Harper's Town. In a court he shall try, by rope he will die, but I'd rather watch him drown. Yes, sir. <laughs> How do you make them up so fast? He's not a simpleton. Yeah. Uh, you take a step closer. You say that again. I think you heard me easily enough. Well, then say it so that I can hear you clearly. Gentlemen, gentlemen, we all have a long way to Charlestown. Let's not conflict when we're all on the same side. We're just two Virginian Cavaliers. And we are grateful for your assistance to our homeland. I don't like any gray talking down to any Marine. And we don't need or want any tension. I give you my word, as a Virginian Cavalier, this tension stops. <laughs> what? Original gentleman, from the founding of the state and back to allegiance to King Charles I during the Civil English Civil War before that. You militia men are so extra. Be charmed by our strange ways. Our fight is not with each other. It took the rising army coming to help John Brown, the scourge of Columbia. A slave and abolitionist army was fixing to defend on Harper's Ferry. We just beat them there. People from outside the state, northerners, the college educated elites, they want to tell us how to live. They could be waiting for us in Charlestown. We should have just shot him. Stop this train in the sticks, firing squad. One, two, three. Just to murder John Brown would be a waste. I mean, he's a monster. We, we need to understand this great evil. We need to know how it all came to be. Him. Yes. Everyone who fought at Harper's Ferry, whether it be a gun or through support, is my brother. See my brother? Because his uniform is way too clean. Looks like he just put it on. So what? You did not fight. He's an interloper. Picked him up in Richmond. Interloper? Well, you can, you can talk to me. I, I'm right here. Oh, shut up. This is a conversation between men, interloper. You may excuse yourself. A conversation between one man and one Virginia Gray. You want to take a step closer? Enough. 
Toss me the flask. An interloper? Let's give him a fair chance. Did, did he bring any libations? No. Then what good is he? I'm an actor. <laughs> like, like a minstrel to entertain? Man, you're way off. He entertains? <laughs> I'd like to think I do more than that. Well? Well, what? We're bored. I haven't been to the theater since I joined the Grays. I never been to the theater. Is it fun? Hey, you juggle? What? 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 You, you juggle flaming torches? He does the serious stuff, the Shakespeare and whatnot. Take what? Take a spear, like a spear? In some theater, it's, it's, it's some theater term. It means something that's very important, very important. Ah, uh, they all shake spears at each other to pretend they're fighting. No, it's, um, yeah, you know, never mind. Entertain actor, juggle! What would you like to hear? Give the men something about war. Huh? They've all been in Harper's Ferry, you haven't. You can only act. Pretend. But maybe you can help us pass the time. Some Shakespeare! We have no spears. Will a sword still be theater-like? Uh, it'll get, um, it'll work. Do, do, do the shake a spear. <clears throat> Romans, countrymen and lovers, hear me for my cause and be silent that you may hear. What's your Roman? Believe me for mine honor and have respect to mine honor that you may believe. Censure me in your wisdom and awake your senses that you may the better judge. And if there be any in this assembly and dear friend of Caesar's, to him I say that Brutus love to Caesar was no less than his. If then that friend demand why Brutus rose against Caesar, this is my answer. He is just talking gibberish. We shut up and get in some theater. Not that I love Caesar less, but that I loved Rome more. Had you rather Caesar were living and die all slaves than that Caesar were dead to live all freemen. As Caesar loved me, I, wait, I weep for him. And he was fortunate, I rejoice at that, as he was valiant, I honor him. But as he was ambitious, I slew him. There is tears for his love, joy for his fortune, honor for his valor, and death for his ambition. Bravo, bravo. Yeah. Who is here so base that would be a bondman? If any speak for him, I have offended. Who is here so rude that would not be a Roman, an American, a son of Virginia? If any speak for him, have I offended? Who is here so vile that will not love his state? If any speak for him, have I offended? I pause for a reply. <laughs> Yeah. That's, yeah. Good. That's good. Slay the dragon. I prefer a dirty limerick. See? Not all bad. Sometimes it's nice to have something different. He killed several friends of mine. Men who would be sleeping in your spot. You didn't run into Harper's Ferry only to see the glowing red eyes of the devil, John Brown. You wanted to go see him in chains. I shot Dangerfield newbie right there. First to take out one of Brown's henchmen. I have admiration for your struggle. I boarded this train to- We descended upon the engine house in Harper's Ferry, but Brown was still in control. He had high ground, more guns and ammo than us. We had the men. We had the fight. We had him surrounded, but Lee wanted to surrender. He even sent little Jeb Stewart to Brown under a white flag and offered to spare lives in exchange for Brown's surrender. Brown, the dragon, he refused. He wanted to die. Wanted to fight. We could have executed that heathen right there. Splattered his brains on the red bricks of the engine house. Yeah, he wanted his martyrdom. Yeah. We pounded the heavy wooden doors of the engine building down. Spent hours on hours hitting that door with our fists. It finally fell. The, the hinges 
loosen, the door swayed, and we had breached the devil's last stronghold. The door smashed to the ground. His own son had already bled out on the floor from the night before. Savage. When the door fell, we charged. I ran straight for Brown. I pointed the bayonet I had all night sharpened right at the dragon. I ran right at him with all my might. I didn't want a man like Brown to die by the bullet. I wanted to look into his eyes as I vanquished that evil from the earth. I was making myself the Archangel Michael, casting Brown out of our land, but my bayonet hit his belt buckle, a spark flew off of him like an explosion when the two metals collided. He fell, but he was unscathed. I picked up my rifle. I turned the business end away from Brown. I planned to beat him with that blunt butt. I struck him. His eyes read as fires of the hell. They just looked right into me. Jesus. When the devil is at your feet, you learn exactly the man that you are. You know if you're a man or not. I readied the death blow, a strike so fierce to collapse his brain pan. And then, then Lee stopped me, physically restrained me from striking him again. He stole my moment. He took the archangel's soul right out from me. The rest of us I had to keep the uh, riders mob at bay, but the man at the head of Brown. They gathered around looking for a fight. We had to pull back our own states. This was a holy war with the risen devil against the state of Virginia. There should be no rules. Uh, the mob would have torn Brown limb from limb. It would have been a ritual sacrifice. Worst yet, Governor Wise showed up. Showed up after we had the whole brouhaha subdued and ordered all of us to keep the dragon alive. Mob was under control by that time. Brown was alive, laying on the floor, semi-conscious. Lee had us all in line, rifles at company. And Governor Wise, which is a misnomer if I've ever heard one, invited the media in. I read those articles. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. They started to interview him as he lay on the floor. They diligently wrote down each of that maniac's words. It went on for hours, those prep school journalists soaking up every bit of Brown's ravings. Son of a bitch loves attention. Yeah, he should have been a cold cadaver at this point with one mighty blow to that evil head. Now, because of Lee, Governor Wise, and a whole gaggle of journalists that appeared on the scene, you're reading newspapers and gazettes filled with the harrowing story of Brown the terrorist. I'm sure all over Massachusetts and New York, the big wigs and the blowhards are contemplating what Brown said on that cold floor. And you, you were never there. I mean, no desire. War is my religion. And destruction is my faith. It's too sacred to be defiled by some actor. You're not enough of a man until your fingers are burned by the heat of a trigger. Easy. He wants nothing more than to satisfy a curiosity that one cannot help but have. You want to see, Brown? Answer me, actor. Do you want to see the terrorist Brown? Is he what you say he is? Or you just want to see the man who took him prisoner? No, actor. You want to dress like a brother, huh? You want to take the garments of the gray? Then I ask you, do you want to smell the sulfur that permeates off of his ungodly presence? Look into Brown's eyes and see what's looking back. Tread lightly. The kid just wants to help out, you know? Have an adventure with men. Oh, you think that you'll be the same when the devil looked back into your eyes? <laughs> you think you won't turn away? Let your fear take over. I want to see the devil in chains. Where are you from, actor? Bel Air, Maryland. 
So son of a bitch ain't even from Virginia. All right, well then, let's make a Virginia out of them. You want to see the Greys, the Marines? You wanted to see history. Yes. Good. You face the dragon, the grandiose dragon. You look into his deep red eyes. You find out who you really are. Stop guessing. Stop pretending that you are a man. You go to him. You go to meet that man, and you will learn exactly who you are. That actor got that bitch in his eye. He won't do it. Oh, wait. I got another. I got another. Uh, Linder. Shut up, everybody. I once met an actor from Bel Air with a cropped mustache and pretty hair. He stole a soldier's uniform, slept alongside the troops in a dorm. And right now, he'll face the devil if he dare. <laughs> <laughs> Challenge accepted. I'll look the terrorist, the man from Ohio, dead in his eyes. I will not flinch. I will not cower. I will stand as a man like any Virginian here, no matter the state of my birth. Would Lee execute an interloper if he was caught? Lee? No. Jackson would. Who's Jackson? That man's made of stone. I have an idea. Yeah, what do you have in mind? You're an actor, you're gonna play a part. Mm -hmm. If you act, and I mean act, like you never have before, you'll probably live through this. Yeah, they probably won't kill him. Just make him walk the gauntlet. Gauntlet? Yeah, whatever you think in the gauntlet's much worse. Moral of the story, don't get caught. We need to get this actor in costume. Yeah, sounds costume? like you got a plan. I, I, mean, I, I, I have another. What are they called? Um, not poems, but um, uh, limerick. The actor wore another man's shoe. He had a lot of growing up to do. He'd cry fair thee well upon the broken gates of hell, challenged by a real man who could have run Brown through. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Act four, killing in the name of. What ho? What ho? We are here to conference with the captive. I don't recognize him. He's a special guest. I said I don't recognize him. He's, uh, he's out of sorts, but nonetheless, he needs to see the captive. Do you recognize me? Sure. And him? He's one of the greats. They blur together after a while. Then let us in. Take it as an order. A direct order. You don't outrank me. But I do. You're not a Marine. You're from the militia. Okay, good. You're not as dumb as you look. I'm not taking orders from you. You're not even a Marine. We're all in transit, and you will recognize my rank. But I don't... I also brought you a full bottle of whiskey. Where have you been hiding that? In a place that the sun just doesn't shine. I take back every bad thing I've ever said about the Virginia Grays. You gentlemen. Cavalier. What? Don't engage. I'm sure it lacks importance. It is of Trojan importance. All right. You boys cannot leave any marks. You beat them, nothing in the face, nothing that requires a doctor, nothing that leaves a mark. We're not here to beat him. Well, then I don't know what you're here for. Well... Step forward, actor. Meet the dragon. If you want me to hold them down, it'll cost you half a bottle more. Or Virginia smokes. How's you been acting? Now, I've learned more Bible passages guarding him for four days than 15 years of Sunday school. What else has you said? Yeah, it's mostly biblical verse, otherwise basic conversation, nothing special. Uh, has he uh, attacked anyone? Not yet. No. Come on, make this a quick process. You're fooling no one. He's crazy. You're not a man. You're not a warrior. You're an actor. He's conferencing with hell about you. You have the courage to tell him your name, don't you? Let the devil in chains write your name in his book. I'm not scared. 
like Christ Jesus. Don't let him get you into a theological debate. It'll never end. <laughs> Take your private moment. I'm on the other side of the door. There's only one way in and one way out of here. So don't try anything. Return when you're good and drunk. No one will ever know. Good evening, Mr. Brown. You are an endorser of the bondage our brothers and sisters are kept in. You wear the uniform of one who will commit to the nation's original sin of slavery. Would you like to tear me limb from limb? I would like to cast thee out. <laughs> We're probably going to beat you to that. Once we're in Charlestown. Well, we're not here for that now. We're here to introduce you to our friend, new friend. He wanted to meet you. Actor. What? I guess it is true. He speaks with other worlds about this one. I know you're a small man. Meet your new best friend. All of you are errand boys sent to do a job that you do not understand. Well, I'll let you two get acquainted. It's true. I hope that God didn't think that whole bottle was just for him. Wait, what? Don't you want to know the great John Brown? None of you are worth knowing. Tell him your name. No, I, 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 don't. I hope you make it through. Ace the Dragon. See, on the other side of this, when you're a man, tell him your name. Hello, boy. I just want to talk to you. Yeah, did you learn what you wanted to know by coming here? I don't know. Nothing. You are nothing in their eyes. You are an actor. Someone who is only as good as what you see right in front of you. Why do you keep calling me an actor? Last winter, I went into Missouri and I took slaves without the snapping of a gun. I moved them through country and finally, I left them in Canada. I don't care about free slaves. I will make you care. How? I will roll the fight of emancipation through every town and village of the country like a tornado. I will make sure you and everything that you love feels the cause, the righteousness of our cause shining in the new day sun. Through blood and pain, our truth will reveal itself to every one of our countrymen. But you're in chains. I designed to do the same thing again on a larger scale. You make it sound so simple. These are complex issues. Preordained divine favor will guide this land or it'll burn it like Sodom and Gomorrah. People's livelihoods, the, the economy is dependent on this system, on slavery. But none of this has anything to do with me. It's, it's the way things are. People keep making noise, but it goes nowhere. You're mm. not gonna change America. You're, you're one man. One man, one man will shape this land. It is the small like you who will never change anything. It's like you never existed at all. You're one crazy. You don't understand what it is to be a man because you're only an actor. The burden of history, knowing it is one individual stewardship to set others free, even when we have to wade through blood to do it. When people look upon my face, when they see the righteousness of liberation, they must decide if they should join or die. An actor asks his people to sit comfortably and be pleased by his actions. A warrior, a holy warrior, holding the axe of Christ Jesus, demands the world around him shake at each step as an individual as a man decides what the future will be. How do you know? Oh, hell, anything? what do you want to hear? Huh? The truth, pleasure, comfort. 
that I so interfered on behalf of the rich, the powerful, the intelligent, the so-called great, or on behalf of any of their friends, either father, mother, sister, brother, wife, or children, or any of that class, and suffered and sacrificed what I have in this interference, it would have been all right. And every man would have deemed it an act worthy of reward rather than punishment. Why did you call me an act? I sought justice for the black man in bondage, now and forever. Do you know who I am? <laughs> One must uproot the law should the higher powers deem it unjust. Listen to me. You don't have a voice that anyone needs to listen to. Do you know me? If I knew you, I would forget you. Providence and perdition faintly notice your birth or passing. We all have to rebel against laws should they violate divine justice or peripherate evil. But a boy like you, an actor, you can only obey. You do not interpret the higher powers. You speak as if the divine speaks to you with care equality. He does not. Could you imagine a just God keeping his children in bondage? Of course you could. You're a subject of the law, not mature enough to think beyond the state. They, every wrist in bondage, they are his children. So he spoke to God me. God never he spoke. spoke. God never to spoke to me. And he bestowed unto me a cause to avenge the harm brought upon his creation. He commanded me to lead the real men to make this land right again or have it run with blood. The book teaches men to remember that they are in bonds as bonds with them. I endeavor to act up to that instruction. I am not an actor. I am a man. I am an exterminating angel of the Lord our God. Why are you calling me an actor? Hebrews 13.3. You're not as intimidating as I was told you would be. Oh, no. That's a lie. Red glowing eyes, the smell of sulfur. You have none of it. Well, then I disappoint. If that's what I was, perhaps it'd be easier to understand. But I am only flesh and blood, yet I have done so much. What is your name? Hmm? Do you have the courage to put your name in front of his light? Light does not shine upon you. Then tell me your name. You're just immortal. God has deemed it necessary that I should forfeit my mortality for the furtherance of the ends of bondage. Mingle my blood further with the blood of my children and with the blood of millions in this slave country whose rights are disregarded by the wicked, by the cruel and unjust enactments. In, in Kansas, where you murdered the unarmed Doyle family. I've read about you. So insignificant. All he does is read about the actions of others. What you did was murder in someone's home. This war is God's war. A war led by the Lord, and he wills to destroy slavery, to grow the tree of liberty. Those who endorse slavery anywhere are always at war. The front line is everywhere. Your brothers in arms back at Harper's Ferry, they know too. They have felt the business of the end of the acts of Christ. Not a slave owner in their ranks. Matthew 3.10, the axe is already laid at the root of the tree. Therefore, every tree does not bear good fruit, is cut down and thrown into the fire. You cannot hide your violence behind scripture. Faith and history will absolve me. You will always be an actor. Are you willing to kill for what you believe in? Not die. Kill. It's easy to be a soldier and kill for another man's beliefs, but are you strong enough to kill for your own beliefs? Do you believe in them that much? Do you trust yourself enough to take someone else's soul? What's your name, boy? 
Are you ready to kill in your own name? Are you ready to say your own name? Did you really murder those people? Or do you just allow a story of your exploits to precede your reputation? What do you think? The world was never changed by a moderate, by someone who respected the status quo. Some stayed in the system and changed the world from the inside out. The world has been changed by people who hit the earth like a tornado. I chose to make history until we all stand in the ashes of this world. I have watched my own children die. They were not spared by the Lord's war. In Kansas? Every night I see my hand massacre in that family. I see God shine in light upon my hands and the acts that was in them. You're not a Christian. You have some demonic powers that are telling you to murder, to kill a whole family. A demonic power telling you that I'm an actor. A step towards liberation. Jesus Christ, the Redeemer, the Liberator, the one who shall free us from the bondsman. Who will liberate Kansas through the South? The Potawatomi Rifles. The Border Ruffians had killed five of us that day. Five liberators. And with their deaths, others can be free. They were not even slave owners. Yet they fought and killed for the identity of those who had infinitely more than they ever had. The world would be better off rid of people who were killing in the name of something that they could never have. But you can't. What is your name? What name will you fight for? I'm sure a demon has already told you. Your name should be nothing because it does not matter. It's best not to tell the devil your name. Are you grandiose enough to think that the devil or providence takes interest in you, huh? Are you important? Should the forces, the great powers of the beyond care about a small man like you wearing a soldier's uniform to blend into everyone else? Look at you, actor. You beg providence to ignore you. You know what I did? You know what I did in Kansas and Virginia? I demanded divine attention. I demanded history stop and say that name, John Brown. Let a clap of thunder speak for me. I said no to slavery and the bondage our society perpetuates. And I said no in thunder. Killing in the name. I killed because history demanded a sacrifice. Should your name even ever be said out loud? Does it matter? You are an actor. How do you know? Someone who works his hardest to pretend to be another man. The only thing that you could be remembered about is those moments when you pretended to be someone who mattered. What is your Christian name? Tell me a man who is part of history or else watches it dissipate into nothingness. Huh? You live a small life. It's Booth. It's John Booth, my name, my Christian name. My name is John Wilkes Booth. And there is nothing more I want than to watch you die. John Wilkes Booth. Yeah, John Wilkes Booth. I will remember your name when they put a noose around your neck. Your most of life that you will ever amount to being an afterthought of a real man. You're nothing but an actor, a boy. I will never die. I will always be in history. My name will never die. You will. You will amount to all that you are now. You will walk through those iron doors where the soldiers wait for you. You will tell them that you are a man and you will know that you are lying. And they will pretend that they are your friends.
problems, but they won't be. And you will always wonder why your life is so empty. And it will be because you know you know, and you will never forget a real existence exists out there. When you pass away from this earth, some will cry, but nobody will sing your name. Booth, an actor dissipating into nothingness like evaporation. When I die, history will quake because of it. John, stop! 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 Oh, pull him off! Get out! You're a Virginian now. R relax. You're a Virginian now. Act five. Six Semper Tyrannus. The sound of the tornado continues and lights fade up. The great seal of the state of Virginia is shown as a tableau on the stage. A dead king in a purple toga lays on the floor, his crown's fallen off his head. John in a blue toga stands with his foot on his chest, holds a staff in one hand. Six Semper Tyrannus. Lights fade down. The sound of the tornado stops. Backstage at the premiere of Hamlet in the Richmond Theater, the stage manager runs from stage left to stage right. 15 minutes is 15 minutes. Thank you. Thank you, 15. John? I'm ready. John, what happened? Where were you? Where have you been for the past week? I was in Charlestown with the Cavalry Regiment and the Virginia Grace. The Cavalry Regiment? Marines. Wait, from the station? You actually went? I've been with them the whole time. You have to get out of that costume. I said I'd be back and ready. They gave your part to that pipsqueak. We'll just have to give it back. John, you angered them when you when you gave up on the part. It's my part. But you left. I told you I was coming back and I'd be ready. Here I am. But John, it's Did you pits tell them I was coming back? Don't degrade this part on an understudy. John, why did you leave? I went to serve the state. Without notice, without telling anyone, you missed the rehearsals. Our opening was delayed anyway. You didn't know your lines when you left. They all thought you quit. I knew them. I told you. John, I love you. I care about you. You're my brother, but for Christ's sake, you did the wrong thing here. If we were in Baltimore or New York City, I wouldn't mind giving that part away. I mean, a Northern audience gets more theater than they can stomach, but we're in the South. At that, we're in Richmond. I love this state. I love this audience. And I intend to give them a better show than that understudy ever could. This isn't even, this isn't even our home. It is for me. You are star to the audience up North, just like our father. The whole Booth clan are stars and entertainers of the North, of the university crowds who like their Shakespeare clean and polished. I hate that. I want to do something different. I want to do something raw. I'm a Virginian, like the founders. No more further compromises. Southern audiences want Shakespeare wild, a rhapsody in touch with something that one can only find deep in dark nature. All that being said, John, tonight I'm performing for this audience tonight. I traveled 500 miles from Charlestown across the state to be here. Why were you with the troops? To serve. No, you didn't want to serve. Of course I did. Were I you went scared? there. Scared? No. It happens. People get scared before openings. I wasn't scared at all. I was never scared. I wanted to see something else besides all this. And now, I'm not afraid of anything. Get out of my costume. You're not playing Horatio. And I'm back to reclaim it. Well, shame you came back because there's nothing for you to do here. Those people in the audience pay to see the Booth brothers in their first play together. The Booth brothers playing Hamlet and Horatio. No one cares to see a little boy like you prance his way through a part that he won by default. Oh, it's a shame you left. The Booth brothers, John Wilkes and Edwin Booth, together at last. 
but you screwed it up. You got scared and you ran from the theater. I was never scared. You were scared to perform next to your more talented brother. John, John, what are you doing? Not backing down, not from him. Take it easy. Maybe we could talk to the director. If he wants to part, he'll have to fight me for it. John, stop. It's my premiere, and these people are going to see my show. Our show. But you left. You found something else. We got to turn again. See what happens. You abandoned everybody. Hold on. What's going on here? The prodigal son has returned. Absolutely. No members of the audience can be backstage before the curtain. My name's on the poster outside. The audience is expecting me. We ran out of money, so we could not get the poster maker to fix. This, this is all mine. God damn it. The only one who thinks I'm not taking the stage tonight is standing on this side of the curtain. The side of the curtain that doesn't matter. Listen, John, we wanted you in the show. You, we... You were enthusiastically cast with your brother, but we are 10 minutes from curtain and none of us know if you even have your lines, much less the part itself. I'm burning with this. You cannot abandon the rehearsals and expect to premiere the part. Just get out. No, it's what I'm entitled to. Titled? Coming from our family, being part of the Booth dynasty, yes, the world entitled is apt. Step away from me. Just leave now. John! Are you insane? John, stop this now. This is not who you are. This is exactly who I am. John, get out. No. Get the curtain up. He fits this part wrong. It's my part, my name, everything. I'm going to put my mark on this play no matter what. Oh, let's do this. The next one is in your eye. And then you'll have to do this play covered in blood and half blinded. And that's only if these two stop me from getting another one off on you. You want to take that risk, child? Do any of you? Hey. I need a moment. What? He's my brother. Let me talk to him. Just a minute now. Three I... minutes, please. That's a hard three. Thanks. Walk away, walk away. What? what? This is not over. I saw John Brown work the press so well that he went from being a murderer to a martyr in a week. It's those same scribbling idiots out there tonight. They'll all write about me in the morning. There is no way I'm going to let some lesser boy like this defile the work we did together. Listen to yourself, you walked away skipped rehearsals, and now you're demanding the part back? I can give a better show. Why? Because I have something to say. I saw Brown. I looked the devil in his eye and did not flinch or turn. I don't, I don't understand. I'm a Virginian. I know there's something deep out there. It was at Harper's Ferry. They, they see that violence, that rage. They showed it to me. You feel it burning inside you. What happened out there? Greatness through violence. Put your foot on the throat of a tyrant. There's that place in history that a man must take a sword and carve out for himself. John, are you okay? There's are, one, are you... the one who doesn't know any of this is that understudy. He's insignificant, a moderate. All he can do is entertain the audience. But he's from Virginia. Nobody knows what it is until you've been there. The power of it all. Knowing history is out there just waiting for men like us to take it by the horns. Greatness, that grandiose dragon doesn't have to be John Brown. It can be me. I don't understand, John. We are so, we are so much more. All we want is to go out there and tell a great story. Now, how long am I going to find the applause of a satisfied audience enough? Brown might have been evil or insane, but he mattered. You're not Brown. I'm a Virginian. 
Virginians believe in something primitive in which the strongest determine history. What do we believe? Well, what are we willing to do? How far are we willing to believe in ourselves? How do we believe? This is Virginia, and I believe in her. We believe in life. That's why we're in a theater. I want to make this performance a historic act of violence worthy of our time. John, I know the pressure of the theater was put on you from day one. Our family forced it on you, but it's okay if you don't right. live no, up that's, to that's, it. Time. I love you, brother. John, please take a seat in the audience. There is a seat reserved for you. Please. Places. Places, everybody. Three minutes. Thank you. Are we escorting the younger booth to a seat? No. Excuse me? It's his part. His name is in the program. His name is on the poster. He never violated his contract because we were extended, delayed. But Ed. If he's out, I'm out. I love my brother. He never abandoned the part. He just took some unforeseen extended days to serve the state of Virginia. Something he believes in. We cannot penalize a young man for seeking adventure or acting in service of the state in a time of crisis. He risked his life for all of us. No. I'll make it known to the journalists in the audience that you rejected the great actor, John Wilkes Booth, for his great act of patriotism. A scandal will hang over this production and you. You will regret this. Probably not. I'm way too famous. You are pompous. Oh, please. I promise you, you will not regret this decision. He will give the performance of his life. He's my brother. He worked hard. I love him. This is the best for him and for all of us. You're scared of him. They'll remember me for this one. They'll all remember me. Then get to your marks. What I've seen tonight, you, John Wilkes Booth, you, you will have to face what you have become. And someday the future will be cruel to you. No, I'm sorry, not tonight. I'm going to command this performance. Get to your place. I'll be part of history. Like a dragon. Quiet. The curtain. They'll remember me. Please, John, brother, don't make me regret this. I'll take my place in history. I'll never let them forget me. I'll never die. The curtain starts to open. Lights fade around Ed and the entire stage except for John, and he stands alone in his own space. Looks up and is transported backward to the execution of John Brown. John Brown stands on a platform with a rope around his neck. John Brown. The young soldier enters and starts to play the snare drum as customary during a hanging. John looks up at Brown as if he's watching the second coming descending that from the heavens. Snare drum suddenly stops. This is a beautiful country. The gallows trap door opens as John Brown's body falls through the gallows. Blackout. I thought the relationship with the brothers was very sweet and how my character was really trying to protect his brother who was obviously on the verge of, you know, there was some mental illness there and I thought it was very sweet how he kept trying to contain him. I just, I, that, that's what I, I loved about it. I'm a fan of history, I always have been, um, largely because I think that no matter what the technology is or no matter, you know, where we are in points of history, the human condition never changes. So it's always interesting to me to look back at our own history and sort of see behaviors that sound like very familiar today. And knowing the history of this family, it was super interesting to sort of see another part or piece of it. But also to hear like John Brown or the soldiers speak their truth. And you know, uh, you can be a hero and you can be a villain. It all depends on the perspective of the person on the other side.
So it's for anybody in the arts, no matter what you do, on stage and in front of the camera, but also behind the camera, people that do the catering, the gaffers, the best boys on Broadway, the makeup people, front of house, the ushers. Most people will live check to check. And when you live check to check and all the checks stop, you're busted. They pay people's grocery, their health insurance, their doctor's bills, their rent. They'll also help you figure out how to get other work. They'll help you figure out how to navigate your insurance. They're basically there to help anybody in the arts, no matter what you do across the country, get help. <laughs> Actors don't need handout, but anyone needs an industry to be able to work. <laughs> Our industry shut down. It's not like a show closed. This thing came and it is not our failure. The only failure that goes from here is a failure to be in support of each other. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please don't forget to donate to the Actors Fund. The information is below and stay tuned tomorrow. Same time, same place here at the New Works Virtual Festival. Have a great night.